What is up guys, Rick Kakis here, and today we are going to be discussing the best and the worst exotic solar primary weapons in Destiny. Now sorry this video is a little late, but I wanted to do this crazy thing where I actually go and experience these weapons in a solar burn playlist before ranking them on guesswork and hearsay. Unfortunately, the last time it was solar burn was, I mean, I don't know if you guys heard of it, but it was the Destiny 2 world gameplay premiere. It was a pretty busy week. So, finally got around to ranking these so that you guys can kind of know and have a picture of the best loot that you're trying to go and get and know where to spend your time in which raids. All of these weapons are acquirable through doing the weekly featured raids and completing the challenge modes in those raids except for the Vex Mythic class which is just acquired for beating the hard mode final encounter of the Vault of Glass. And so, let's get started here with the bottom of the barrel, the worst of the solar primary exotics. Now before I reveal what that gun is, I think it's important to say that these weapons are not too far apart. Usually, and we did have for the arc and the void weapons, there's one or two weapons that are just Terabad, and then the top place weapon is really really good. The solar weapons don't really have that. All of these weapons are pretty close and the gap between the worst and the best isn't that far, so just keep that in mind. But, in my opinion, the worst solar primary weapon is the Fever and Remedy hand cannon from the Wrath of the Machine. Now, that's going to sound weird because I'm then going to talk about what this weapon is like and there's going to be a lot of positives. Firstly, this weapon comes with the intrinsic perk Whirlwind's Curse, giving it bonus damage against fallen enemies, like, pretty useful actually, and bonus agility when you use it. Again, just great. This hand can also can get a little bit more impact than normal. It has a pretty damn good range. It has, you know, not great stability, but reasonable stability. It also has the Wombo Combo perks, which all Wrath of the Machine weapons have, where you have Reactive Reload, so if you reload after a kill, you get a damage bonus. And also it has the unique perk Quick Reaction, gain an increase to agility while Reactive Reload is active. So, again, that sounds good. Like, there's a lot of positives for using this hand cannon. Again, it's certainly not a bad gun, but it's the worst of the bunch because at the end of the day, it feels like a rather average hand cannon. A lot of weapons in Destiny, when you're trying to use them in PvE, have trouble dealing with multiple enemies. And that happens all the time in PvE. Bungie just throws a, a massive amount of adds at you at once. So a hand cannon that doesn't have Firefly, doesn't have explosive rounds, doesn't have anything to deal with those multiple enemies, again it feels kind of like an average legendary hand cannon that doesn't have a lot going for it. And that is definitely the problem. This combined with, again, not so great stability, it just is a little bit hard to use in some scenarios. Now the Fever and Remedy does pack a wallop, it does a lot of damage per shot, and so it's actually not bad against higher tier enemies and potentially even bosses, but that is the minority of what you're doing in PvE. If you're doing a strike, if you're doing a nightfall, where you actually have to rely on burn weapons like solar primaries, 90% of those activities are just dealing with normal low level adds. And so the fact that this gun isn't that good at dealing with normal low level adds is a huge, huge downside. And that's why we find the Fever and Remedy at the bottom of the solar weapon ranking. But moving on, we have number five. The second worst gun is the Abyss Defiant Adept Auto Rifle from Crota's End. This weapon has a few pretty interesting perks. Firstly, it has the intrinsic perk Hive Disruptor, increased damage to Hive Majors. If you're doing a strike with the Hive, this is definitely going to come up. It also has the final perk Lich Bane. This makes it so that you, while you're shooting wizards, you stun them. This against Omnigal is absolutely fantastic, so just keep that in mind. But in all honesty, that doesn't come up too much. This weapon also has, uniquely, the ability to choose between two different perks that 
pretty vastly change the character of this weapon. You can choose just hip fire, where you get increased hip fire accuracy, and then this acts like a normal medium rate of fire auto rifle, or you can choose focus fire, where if you aim down sights, your damage increases and your fire rate decreases. Frankly, either choice is pretty good with this weapon. Focus fire makes it a lot more accurate, makes it a more capable at those medium to potentially even longer ranges, and then hip fire makes this just kind of a close range machine. Unlike the Fever and Remedy, this is just naturally great at taking care of groups of low level adds because it's an auto rifle. You just hold the trigger, you just aim down sights, mow to the side, and kill like 10 enemies with a single sweep of your weapon. It's actually fantastic. I actually really enjoyed my time using this weapon, it's just so easy to use. It's just an auto rifle that does massively increased damage when doing solar burn. The problem with this weapon and why it finds itself kind of lower in the rankings is because a lot of its perks are pretty unique to certain scenarios. You know, Lich Bane is not going to come up for the majority of activities. And so you're probably better off if this had a more useful perk like Rangefinder where it's useful in any scenario. So that is kind of the downside of this weapon. It's pretty average. And so moving on from there, we have in the number four slot, the Smite of Moraine Adept Exotic Pulse Rifle from the King's Fall Raid. Now, mostly the King's Fall weapons kind of fall to the wayside. King's Fall is notorious for the raid offering the worst loot when compared to the other raids. However, the Smite is actually a pretty good gun. Now, firstly, it has the intrinsic perk Will of Light, bonus damage against Taken. This comes up a lot in so many strikes. In fact, the majority of strikes have the chance for you to go in and have a randomized encounter where you're versing Taken. So this will come up all the time. Further than that, you also have the unique perk Cocoon. When this weapon is stowed away, it automatically reloads. This definitely again comes up. You know, you're shooting enemies and then you want to switch to your sniper to damage the boss. You do that, you get some rounds into the boss, you switch back to the smite, and hey, it's fully reloaded. This is undoubtedly a useful and good perk. And then lastly, the really cherry on top for this weapon is that it comes with Firefly. Pulse rifles do not come with Firefly. In fact, the Smite of Moraine is the only one that does. Now, stats-wise, it's not that fantastic. Linear Compensator does help and the recoil is mainly vertical, but it does bounce around quite a bit. It's not that accurate. It doesn't have a great shot pattern, but it does have these really useful perks. So you have an average pulse rifle with above average perks, and therefore you have an above average weapon. Firefly is also really easy to trigger with this gun because it kind of bounces up when you shoot it, so you just aim center mass, it bounces up and you get a headshot kill, and Firefly triggers, easy as that. In fact, in my opinion, I think the Smite is the best King's Fall primary weapon. If you're doing King's Fall, this is kind of the thing you're looking for. But it's time to move on to the number three slot, which goes to the Vex Mythoclast Exotic Fusion Rifle from the Vault of Glass Raid. This is a really unique weapon. It says fusion rifle, but it's really the most similar to an auto rifle. This weapon shoots one fusion rifle bolt at a time. It has a 28 round magazine if you're using extended mags. So essentially, you have an auto rifle that does a lot more damage per shot than other auto rifles, but kind of shoots faster. The DPS output with the Vex Mythoclast is actually really, really high. Like you're basically doing as much damage as a scout rifle where you can kill, you know, normal till enemies in a single shot, but you are shooting way faster than any scout rifle in the game. Like this thing outputs so much damage. This is also helped by the crowd control perk, which is so easy to trigger in PvE. Like killing an enemy is just so easy and then getting a damage bonus basically constantly on a bunch of other enemies is really useful. 
So the Vex Mythoclast isn't necessarily good due to a few perks, it's good due to the nature of the weapon. It's great against low tier adds because it's an auto rifle on steroids, and it's also pretty good against higher tier adds and bosses because it outputs so much damage. The downside of this weapon is that it is a little hard to use, it recoils quite a bit, even with linear compensator, it just races to the top of your screen, so it does bounce around quite a bit. So landing your shots in medium to long range can be a tad difficult, but you know, in PvE, you're not necessarily too concerned about that. And now moving on to the number two slot, the second best solar primary in Destiny is the Vision of Confluence Adept Scout Rifle from the Vault of Glass. This weapon is everything and anything you want from a scout rifle put into one scout rifle, basically. Firstly, you have the intrinsic perk Oracle Disruptor. Unfortunately, although this is so good, so good in the Vault of Glass, it's not useful basically anywhere else, so that's kind of a downside. But this weapon has incredible stats, like almost maxed out stability if you put on perfect balance, a magazine size of 19, which is totally good, um, you know, decent range, decent reload, full auto as a perk, and Zen Moment making this thing, you know, become super accurate if you damage anything. It's just such an easy to use scout rifle, and that's what makes it so good. You can just roll through a strike, roll through a nightfall, and play very cautiously, which, you know, you do need to do. This weapon, again, like the Fever and Remedy and like some of the other weapons, it's not, it doesn't have something like Firefly, so it's not that great at dealing with groups of adds, except for the fact that it does have full auto with a 19 round magazine. So you can just treat this almost like an auto rifle, a slow shooting auto rifle. Mow down a group of adds in no problem. But again, like I was saying earlier, you can just stay out of the engagement, stay back. If it is solar burn and you're playing a nightfall, enemies do more damage to you. So it's nice to be able to kill everything so easily from a distance where they can't shoot you back, where you are totally safe. And that comes up a lot in a bunch of different Destiny PvE activities. This weapon is also fantastic against bosses. It's very common when using the vision that, hey, you ran out of sniper rifle bullets, well, it's time to just pick away at the boss with your vision, to which you will land every shot fully automatically to the head because it's so damn accurate. And if you're doing a solar burn playlist, it is pretty powerful. It takes down strike bosses like damn easily, damn easily. In fact, this weapon is so consistent, it actually sees a decent amount of play in PvP, which is crazy because, you know, there's no reason to use this weapon necessarily in PvP. It's solar, solar doesn't come up in PvP, but people get it, it's so easy to use that, again, they even bring it into PvP and do well with it. And that speaks volumes for how good this weapon is. But it's time to move on to the number one slot. The best solar primary weapon in Destiny is the Genesis Chain Exotic Auto Rifle from The Wrath of the Machine. It's kind of crazy to have the best and the worst slots filled in by Wrath of the Machine weapons, but here we are. Firstly, you get that Whirlwind's Curse intrinsic perk, more damage against Fallen, better agility, just great intrinsic perk overall. The Genesis Chain is so good because it is basically the Fatebringer in auto rifle form. And, you know, not necessarily, but pretty damn close. This weapon has focus fire, slows down that rate of fire, increases the damage, and with this weapon's archetype, which is the high damaging auto rifles, you're going to be doing a substantial amount of damage per shot. You can one shot kill a lot of lower tier enemies, which is no joke. Now this is combined with the Wrath Wombo Combo perk, Focused Firefly. This puts Firefly on an auto rifle, which again, you can't get otherwise. No other auto rifle can do this. It's just the Genesis chain. So every single shot of your 30 round magazine for focus fire has a chance to trigger Firefly. That's insane. 
the amount of damage, the amount of area of effect damage you can produce in a short amount of time. If a bunch of thralls are charging at you, if a bunch of acolytes are charging at you, if you're doing the Wrath of the Machine and you're doing Vosik and there's a bunch of dregs and acolytes, the amount of just area of effect damage you can produce and kill enemies so quickly, it's just astounding. This weapon is so, so good against dealing with those groups of adds, which, like we discussed earlier, that's 90% of engagements when you're doing a solar burn playlist, is just dealing with adds. And this weapon is one of the best weapons in the entire game at doing so. This compares with the Fatebringer. I'm not saying it's better than the Fatebringer, but it compares with it. It's right up there with it. And to be honest, this weapon is actually not too bad against higher tier enemies and bosses either. You basically have a 30 round fully automatic scout rifle with this gun when you're using the focus fire perk. And somehow, even though the stability for this weapon is terabad, and it's not very good, somehow, when you use this weapon, it doesn't feel like that. Like, the stability feels perfectly fine. Maybe it's the linear compensator perk, I don't know exactly what it is, but I've never had a problem landing my shots with this weapon. It feels way more accurate than something like the Vex Mythoclass, for example. In fact, similar to what I said last time with the Vision of Confluence, this weapon's consistency and power is so good, it sees play in PvP. But it doesn't just see play, this is actually the most used auto rifle in PvP. Well, technically the legendary version, but still that shows the power potential of the Genesis chain. It's just a very, very good auto rifle that also gets Firefly, which makes it better than pretty much any other auto rifle in the game at dealing with groups of ads. So it's the best solar primary weapon in Destiny. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video found it informative and if you did please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video if you guys want to see more destiny and destiny 2 content be sure to slap that subscribe button now if you guys want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity the best way is to follow me on twitter at rick Kakis. that's linked in the description down below as is my twitch channel which you can also follow again i hope you enjoyed the video and as always have a good day